AI on YouTube now is so much more than you think. It's become a game changer for some creators building their entire workflows around it. And today I'm going to break down how we use AI in my YouTube agency and how it's helping us pump out videos that get millions of views. Let's start with research. On YouTube, research is everything. It's the first step like before anything else happens. And this is where most creators keep things hush hush, acting like it's some big secret. But all they really do is look up a few similar videos and copy what's working. In my team, we've got a better system. We use two AI tools for coming up with video ideas. The first one is called No GPT. This tool is a beast. It doesn't take away the need to check out other videos, but it makes the process way faster. Instead of sitting through entire videos at 2x speed, I just drop the link into No GPT and get a summary. That summary is pure gold. It gives us ideas that lead to titles and thumbnails. But to get those ideas, you first need to understand how others are tackling the same topic. If we see a great idea, we dig deeper using the AI chat feature. We ask follow-up questions to see what gaps there are and how our content can go above and beyond. Honestly, the summary feature and the AI chat are the real MVPs here. They're the only things we really use on no GPT. The transcription feature doesn't really save us much time, but it will be important later. Another tool we lean on is ChatGPT, of course, but not just in the usual way. Most people use it to brainstorm ideas, right? You also use it to dig deep into competitor analysis. After wrapping up research with NoGPT, we take those transcripts and upload them to ChatGPT. We ask it to look for patterns in structure, storytelling hooks, and the kind of info they're dropping. Armed with this, we can ask ChatGPT to highlight areas where we could amp up our videos for more engagement. Depending on what the analysis shows, it might suggest making the video longer to cover missed points, or it will flag errors and prove read content. Bottom line, after this process, we have a clear roadmap for improvement. For example, ChatGPT helped us nail the perfect length and structure for cooking videos on the healthy and fast channel, and that's just one of many channels we manage. Now, some of you might be thinking, why not just do this all manually? Well, human creativity is awesome, but it has its limits. It's easy to get stuck in your own ideas. With ChatGPT, you can always start fresh. Just open a new chat, drop a new prompt, and boom, an endless stream of ideas. You just need to sift through them. Take thumbnails, for instance. We design all our thumbnails manually, but during research, we also upload competitors' thumbnails into ChatGPT. We ask it to pick out patterns and elements that make people click. And let me tell you, some of the suggestions are quite inventive, stuff we wouldn't have thought of, but they work. We saw that with our ChatGPT guide video. Sure, the thumbnail and title might look like everyone else's, but the tiny tweaks ChatGPT suggested helped us catch way more attention and the script refined kept people hooked for way longer. No video production pipeline is complete without scripting, right? By this point, we've already locked in the overall idea and the key info we want to include. So typically, we've got everything jotted down somewhere, either in a document or directly in a chat GPT chat. From there, we use a set of refined prompts to generate the scripts we need. Our prompt system is built around four types of scripts. Script plans, false scripts, scripts for shorts, and sales-focused scripts. Each type has its own set of prompts designed for specific scenarios. For example, with full scripts, we've set up three main scenarios. Scenario one is based on audio messages. A lot of our best ideas pop up during meetings and calls. So we transcribe those and feed them into ChatGPT to generate scripts. Scenario two is built around the hero's journey idea. We've got a template for this where we paste it into ChatGPT, type in the channel specific details and let it do the magic. The third scenario uses pre-existing written content like an article. We've got two options here. Either we blend this info into an existing script or transform the article itself into a script. Each prompt has been designed and fine-tuned to give us solid results. They are not perfect, and we know that. AI is great, but it can't fully replace the human touch. So after ChatGPT finishes up, one of our script writers and editors jumps in to proofread tweak phrasing and give it a light polish. But honestly, at that point, it's just minor adjustments. When you think about how much time this whole process saves, those small touch-ups are a breeze. The key thing to understand here is that ChatGPT isn't writing scripts from scratch. It's a tool that works under the guidance of professionals. If something it generates isn't up to par, we rewrite, correct, and fine-tune until it's perfect. Sometimes scripts are entirely human written and AI just steps in for polishing, making them smoother and easier to narrate. So what you're hearing is still very much human driven, but 
enhanced with a bit of AI magic. Once the script is ready and the story is set, we move on to thumbnails and AI plays a big role here too. Remember how we used ChatGPT to analyze thumbnails earlier? All that analysis gets input back into ChatGPT to generate a rough draft of our thumbnail. We have a detailed drum system for this where we describe the thumbnail step by step. The AI generated thumbnail gives us a blueprint, which then goes to a human designer who brings it to life. But even our designers get an AI boost. We often need fresh backgrounds for thumbnails and instead of sourcing them manually, we generate them using Crea AI. And designers sketch the basic layout with brushes and AI fills in the details. The results are pretty solid, especially after some color grading and a touch of blur. Another essential tool in our arsenal is an upscaler like Remini or Magnific. Our designers have the freedom to choose, but the idea is simple. Sometimes there is no time for high quality stills, so we have to work with screenshots from videos. And even if the video is in 4K, the quality can be rough for thumbnails. The same goes for logos or background elements that need a quality bump. That's where upscalers like Remini and Magnific come in. Magnific is especially great for upscaling images of people, keeping all the facial details intact, while Remini works best for logos and non-human elements. We don't just use this approach on my personal channel or the AI master channel. We apply this same streamlined process to every channel that decides to work with my agency. And I'm super proud of the results we're delivering. We've been building this YouTube agency for years now, and we've partnered with some of the biggest names on the platform. Take Mobile Vlog, for instance, one of the top channels about video editing, where Florian Ham, a massive investment channel with a super charismatic host. We've helped so many creators maximize their potential grow their audiences and boost their revenue because monetization isn't the only way to make money on YouTube. You can sell merch, services, courses. There's a whole world of possibilities. But to sell effectively, you need a channel that's not just entertaining, but also strategically managed to drive sales. That's where we come in. If you're curious, check the link in the description for a quick questionnaire, fill it out, get in touch, and we'll show you just how high your channel can go. When it comes to sound, we keep it pretty simple. Most voiceovers are done by real people because because there's just no replacing genuine human performance. But we do use AI for some parts, specifically Eleven Labs. This tool is incredible for cloning voices and generating speech with high quality results, but we only use it in specific cases. For example, if we notice an issue like a clicking sound or a siren during editing and can't re-record, we'll just generate that sentence with AI and swap it in. Another time we use it is for quotes. Any quote always sounds better when it's read by someone other than the host. It gives the video a more dynamic feel get the idea. Video editing is still very much a hands-on process. AI's role here is mostly for automating smaller tasks like generating subtitles for shorts. CapCut is our go-to for that. And when it comes to B-rolls, yeah, we could just use stock footage, but people are so familiar with those clips now that they just kill retention. So instead, we generate AI videos using tools like Runway ML or Hyper. Even if these AI-generated B-rolls come out looking a little quirky, they are way more more engaging than the same old stuck stuff. You can even play it off as a fun element and it works. To take things up a notch, we sometimes create our own background music and sound effects using Filmora. I actually made a whole video on this where I break down how you can do the same. So here's the takeaway. AI isn't a toy, it's a tool. And if you know how to use it, you've got the edge. As creators, we shouldn't be afraid of AI replacing us. What we should be worried about is getting left behind while everyone else is leveling up their content with AI. AI makes us faster, more efficient, and the content becomes better, more engaging, and feels way more organic. And yeah, it helps channels grow faster and make more money, no doubt about that. So if you've been on the fence about AI, it's time to start using it to build your channel. And hey, if you want to go all in, our team can help you out. The link to the questionnaire is in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.